All right, g'day to anyone watching. I currently have my First World War AIF or Australian Imperial Force uniform on. Um, and I'm gonna just go from top to bottom with it. Uh, what I have, what I don't have, what I need to build upon, uh, personal items, uh, and stuff issued to every infantry soldier throughout the war. Um, this kit here is basically uh, battle order webbing, which was used from 1915 pretty much until the end of the war. Uh, and then the rest, it kind of changed around, but they went into the war with marching order and then it was changed quite a bit to the soldiers' likings um, and just what was suitable to their environment. Um, anyway, so we'll start from the top. Uh, here we've got the general uh, slouch hat, which was issued to all infantry soldiers, and it was given to the light horse, except they had the infamous uh, emu plume in it. Uh, yeah, so it's got the rising um, sun uh, badge there, puggery, and the chin strap. Pretty cool. And the Aussies used this, well, the Anzacs, the New Zealanders as well, um, used this throughout the course of the war. Uh, but also the Brody was issued. I don't yet have a Brody. I'm aiming to get an original First World War Brody, but um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, next down, we'll go on to the webbing. Here we have the pattern 1908 or P08. Uh, web gear which is fully canvas with um, brass and metal uh, bits connecting the haversack and the ammo pouches and the buckle here everything has a bit of brass on it uh, we'll start from the left here i've got the small p08 um not the luger the uh web gear obviously um small haversack this would carry personal items rations also underwear and you know toiletries for the paper whatnot next we have the bayonet frog and the helve carrier and this is the helve right here which is the pole for the entrenching tool and obviously the bayonet frog here which i'm yet to get a bayonet for the uh 1910 or 07 i think that the um short magazine lee enfield was issued but, um, yep, for the SMLE, um, the 303, obviously. Um, back here, we have the entrenching tool cover with the entrenching tool head in it, which is half pick, half shovel. Moving around to here, we have the uh, canteen holder, carrier, whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't yet have a canteen, but I'm also aiming for an original First World War canteen um, and then obviously the ammo pouches which could hold the 303 ammunition for the Lee Enfield um, I'm probably just going to fill it up with wooden blocks um, just to make it fill out a bit more uh, obviously the belt here uh, general issue belt not the special one and then the straps which go through um, the ammo pouches onto the back of the belt. Um, underneath we've got the tunic. This is the second pattern tunic which was a um, bit more of a pea soup colour which is what it's known for but it's also had the brown generic uh, British kind of look to it. Um, I've got the Australia to Australia logos, should zoom in on them. Um, sorry, shoulder titles, uh, titles, shoulder titles, can't speak. Um, I've got the Rising Sun collar badges. Zoom in on those two. Hopefully that maybe focuses. This whole thing better be in focus. Uh, it's got four pouches, one, two breast pouches, and two hip pouches, I guess. Um, 
these could carry anything as they're pretty big pockets. Um, this is really nice and cozy. This is extremely warm. Um, down here I've got my breeches. Um, these only go to the ankle pretty much until the boot comes up and then you wrap your puttee around it. Um, anything else? No, that's it. And then puttees. I hope that gets in the shot. Um, puttees which wrap from the ankle of the boot up to your kneecap pretty much. And then you wrap around here which tightens the, um, the top of the puttee. Here, oh, I don't know if I can get it up, um, 1915 hobnail uh, First World War Australian boots, which were used in Gallipoli and on the Western Front uh, in the trenches. Proved pretty helpful. Um, yeah, I also have a greyback shirt uh, underneath, which was given to all soldiers. Um, whew, out of breath. Uh, yeah, so when it got too warm uh, on Gallipoli, or I guess on the Western Front, uh, they'd take off their tunic and they'd still have some nice warm clothing underneath. Um, so what I'm missing uh, are some rations. I need to put some rations in here. I need to put some uh, underclothing and whatnot. Um, any medical stuff might put in there. Um, obviously missing the uh, canteen or the water bottle, um, the bayonet, I need to get a bayonet, um, that's what I'm really striving for at the moment, the Brody helmet, um, wish to get the Brody helmet, uh, now the 27th uh, Inf Battalion, um, after 1915 was when the, um, the blue and brown diamond was uh, issued. So that was their colour throughout the whole war, their insignia, but um, it was issued and put onto most most tunics after 1915. Now I do have a pair, although these do have the A on it, um, which was Anzac, which they served in Anzac um, at Anzac Cove. But they wouldn't have had that during the war, so these are inaccurate. I'm hoping to get another pair, but I don't think I'm going to put them on. Uh, just to keep the... Uh, you know, this could be for any infantry battalion throughout the war, unless they had special uh, needs. Um, anyway, yeah, that's it. That's my whole kit and caboodle. Uh, my First World War Australian kit. I'm stoked about this, absolutely love it, uh, best thing ever, I'm just so pleased to have it. Um, make sure to comment and like and whatever you want to do, just so pleased I have this. Um, yeah, what other vids you want me to do and whatnot, uh, cheers for watching. Issued to all infantry soldiers. The hell was that? Let's turn that off. Fire out, that was weird. Alright, like I was saying.